And so when I am deciding which way this is going to open, I'm gonna say since my y is squared, this is gonna open left, right. All right, which means I need to get the x completely by itself. So I'm gonna move everything over to the other side and leave the x alone. Um, if that x were negative, I would probably bump the x over. I'm just trying to get the x positive and by itself. So I'm gonna have x on the left-hand side. I'm gonna move the, move the two y squared over. That'll become a negative two y squared. I'm gonna move the negative 24 y over, so it'll become a positive 24 y. And then I'm gonna move the 71 over, so it'll become negative 71. First thing you wanna do is just get that variable by itself. Now we're gonna do the completing the square process so that we have it in vertex form or the standard form that we've been given for these equations. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna factor this negative two out of both of the terms that have the y in them. So I have a negative two then on the outside here I have a y squared, and then divide this by the negative 2, negative 12, and then the minus 71. And this is where I'm going to complete the square. <clears throat> I'm going to complete the square by taking the number in front of the y, cutting it in half, which gives me a negative 6, and then I am going to square that, which will give me a 36. So that means inside those parentheses, I'm going to add a 36 and subtract a 36. So I'm going to add 36 here, but I need to also subtract it since it's on the same side here of the equation. I basically want to add nothing, right? Because it's an equation. And then I need this minus to come out of the parentheses. In order for it to come out, it's being multiplied by something. What is it being multiplied by? A negative 2. So negative 2 times negative 36 is what? Positive 72. That's how I can get that 36 out of there. <coughs> and so I now basically have it in the standard form. The negative 2 stays here. This becomes x and whatever this guy was. This is a negative 6. That becomes x minus 6 squared. And on the outside, I just combine these two, a negative 71 and a positive 72, I have a plus one. Wait, it's x. Oh, sorry, it's y. Yeah, I'm, that's y. We don't change it to an x. So now I have it in the form that I need it in. All right, and so remember, when it is a y value inside here, um, this is still my a, so that tells me if it's opening left or right. That tells me how to find my p. But remember, for this one, this is my h, and this is my k, right? When it's a y, those are flipped. So my vertex is always h, k. In this case, it's 1, and remember inside the parentheses, it's the opposite sign, so my vertex is 1, 6. So I found my vertex, and I'm going to graph the vertex, 1, 6. All right. Which way is this going to open, left or right, and how do you know? It's going to open left. This is negative, and this is the side that goes to the negative, right, if we're looking at a number line. So this is going to open left. If you wanted to sketch it, you could sketch it. That's fine. This does ask for the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is now going to be a y equals, because it's going to be a horizontal line, and it's going to be whatever's there. So my axis that this thing's going to be symmetric to is going to run this direction. So if I were to sketch this parabola, it's going to do something like this. I still have to label two other items. I have to label my focus and my directrix. So my focus and directrix are going to fall. My focus is going to fall on that axis of symmetry inside the parabola. 
and my directrix is gonna be perpendicular. It's gonna run perpendicular to this outside the parabola. So focus is gonna be inside, directrix is gonna be on the outside. So my focus is going to keep the same y value because it's gonna be on that line. So I'm still gonna have a six here, but I need to um, add and subtract my p. So I have to actually solve for that p and I use the a to do it. All right, so right here, I'm gonna solve for my p. Remember my um, a value equals one over four times p. My a value here is a negative two. So remember I can flip both sides, negative one half equals four times p. If I divide both of those by four, my p value is gonna be negative one eighth. Negative one eighth. So for my focus, I'm gonna take that x value of my vertex and I'm gonna add a negative one eighth. And for my directrix, I'm gonna take um, that x value and I'm gonna subtract a negative one eighth. That's how I find those. So if I subtract one eighth or add a negative rather, my focus is going to happen at seven eighths and six. And if I add, my x is going to equal nine eighths or one and an eighth. And so my focus is gonna be just one eighth in front and my directrix is just gonna be one eighth behind it, right? And you can estimate where you're doing it, but it should be one eighth inside for the focus and one eighth outside for your directrix. And so now you found all pieces that it asked for. You found the vertex, your axis of symmetry, your focus, and your directrix, all four pieces, and you graphed it. For this one, it's giving you your vertex, so it's giving you your h and your k. So you automatically know the h value and the k value. And then it's giving you the focus. And if you'll notice, um, the focus, the x value is the same as my vertex. My x value is the same which means my focus moved up or down from my vertex, which means this parabola opens up or down, right? Make sense? And so if I want an up or down, it's gonna look like this, a x minus h quantity squared plus k. That's my up down, right? Um, I already know my h and I already know my k. <clears throat> All I really need to find is my a. And so I'm gonna use the <coughs> fact that a equals one over four p, and then I'm gonna figure out what p is, all right? So <clears throat> my p value from the focus on this one um, is going to be the k plus p equals um, this one right here. So this equals k plus p. That's what that equals. And I already know k right? So I know that one piece of this is going to be the k, and I'm solving for the p. I've already labeled my k, so I'm just going to plug it in. Negative 25 over 12 equals negative 2 plus p, right? And now I'm just solving. So add 2 to both sides, so I get negative 25 over 12 plus 2. We need what to add fractions? What do you have to have to add fractions? Common denominator. So multiply top and bottom by that 12, you get 24 over 12, that's two. And so I get negative 25 plus 24 is negative one. That is my p-value, all right? And to solve for a, I'm just gonna take this p-value and plug it in to solve for a. So a equals one over four times negative one twelfth. Just do order of operations. Four times negative one twelfth is negative one third. One over anything is the reciprocal, right? So the reciprocal of negative one third is negative three. So that is my A value. 
Once you know your A, your H, and your K, you just write the formula. That's what it's asking for. Fill it in. So I'm going to fill in my A, my H, and my K to that formula right there, and that will be my answer. So Y equals my A value is negative 3. X minus H. H is negative 10. X minus a negative 10 is plus 10. And then plus K. My K is negative 2. This is the equation for that parabola. So again, we want this in standard form. We know this is an ellipse because both of my variables are squared. All right? So when both of your variables are squared, you want to make sure all your numbers that you've been given, just constants, are all on one side. So in this case, they didn't give us a constant. But if you look at number 11 or number 12, you see that there's a constant. You want that moved out of the way. And you want just your variables on one side of the equation. You also want to group your variables. So I'm going to rewrite this left side here and keep my x's first and then my y's just because that's how all of my formulas are done. And then <clears throat> simplify it with completing the square. So I have 49x squared plus my 196x. And I'm adding to that 4y squared. And that equals 0. You want to complete the square. Um, we don't really have to for the y <clears throat> because it is, doesn't have a, just a y value. If it had like an, a y value to the first power, we would have to complete the square there, but we don't. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just complete the square for the x. I'm going to take the 49 out. I'm going to have x squared plus, this is 4x, hopefully. I did my math right. All right, equals zero. And I'm going to complete the square there. This is a little bit different, though, because here I'm going to add that number to both sides instead of adding it and subtracting it within it. So I'm going to still take that number and divide it by 2, get whatever that was and square it to see what I'm going to add. So I'm going to add a 4 here. If I add a 4 to the left side, I need to add a 4 to the right side. But remember, this 4 is inside this parentheses here. All right, and no, it won't always be the same number. It just happens to be in this case. So I'm going to multiply the 49 times the 4 and add that to both sides of the equation. All right, so I've added the 4 here, and I've added the 4 times the 49 on the other side to keep that equation balanced. So with a parabola, you add, subtract. With the circles and ellipse, you add to both sides. But your concept of getting it out of the parentheses to know what you're supposed to add is the same. So now I have a 49 here. This becomes whatever this number was, remember, positive 2. I still have the y squared, and that equals the 196. And remember, for ellipses, they do have to always be equal to 1. Always. So I am going to divide everything by that 196 so that every piece of this equals, um, anytime you divide, you have to divide every piece and so that the right side is a 1. So I get that 1 there. Um, 49 does reduce, obviously, with 196. So this one's going to be over 4. And then this is going to be over 49. I'm just reducing those fractions. All right. Now, remember, looking at this, I can tell which way it's elongated. All right. So I can tell by the denominators that this is going to be elongated on the Y. It's going to be elongated on the Y because my Y has my larger denominator. All right. So now I've got to figure out... Um, all the pieces that it is asking for. The first thing I did was put it in standard form. I've already done that. I need to identify the center. The center is, again, going to be HK. Um, my H is going to be with my X, and my K is going to be with my Y. Remember, it is subtraction. So it's the opposite of what's inside here. 
So from this, I'm going to get a negative 2. What's being added or subtracted to the y? What's being added or subtracted to the y squared? Nothing. 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 So we put nothing like that. 0. My center is at negative 2, 0. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that point. Negative 2, 0. All right? And so my major axis is going to go up and down um, farther away, right? And my minor axis is going to go left and right. My denominators tell me how far away to move it. So my major vertices are my the ones that are on the major axis are going to be on the y, which means the x is not going to move, and I'm going to add and subtract the square root of what's under my y. What's under my y is 49, right? So that means I'm going to add 7 to that center, and I'm going to subtract 7 from that center to figure out where those vertices are. So from here, I'm going to go up 7 and down 7. Those are the points I'm going to plot there. My co-vertices are the ones that are on my minor. And in this case, my x is now going to move. I look under the x. There's a 4. You take the square root. So I'm going to leave the 0 alone, and now I'm going to look at that negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2. Well, that gives me 0, 0. And negative 2 minus 2. Negative 4, 0. That's where my co-vertices will happen at 0, 0, and at negative 4, 0. My focus is a little bit different. My focus I have to solve back for my c value. But remember, it's my larger denominator minus my smaller denominator to equal what I add and subtract, OK? So my larger denominator is 49. My smaller denominator is 4. I get the square root of 45 as my c value because that was c squared. I have to take the square root of both sides. Um, simplify it. That's 3 squared of 5. 9 times 5. 3 squared of 5. And you can honestly leave it. I mean, in this case, it's a 0 that you're adding and subtracting to. So my, again, my focus up and down or left and right is going to follow my major so whatever moved on my vertices, that's what's going to move here. Negative 2 plus 3 squared of 5, negative 2, and a, a negative 3 squared of 5, right? Because I add and subtract to the y value here. And you can estimate where that is. I mean, it's going to be somewhere between your, you know, probably a little above 4, a little below 4 there. But that's your focus. And then, of course, you want to finish it by sketching your, your ellipse, right? So you want to not, that's not an ellipse, there we go. You wanna um, sketch that ellipse to actually graph it. So when you're going through this one, you're gonna use all of your information to figure out what it is. You're gonna have to use your logic, major axis, that gave me one of the values of my center. If my x didn't change, it gave me the x. If my y had not changed, it would have given me the y. The other one, you just average to find it. hk is solved for. To find the other piece, they gave us this, which told me that my longest side of my right triangle, my tallest leg, brother, was um, 7. And so I was just solving back for this one. Solving back for that one. <clears throat>